This is Microtik's first 2.5 gig Ethernet switch. It has eight 2.5 gig Ethernet ports, two SFP plus 10 gigabit ports, and it has Microtik's great management that we've come to love over the years. But when we were testing it, there were a couple surprise features that were both good and bad, and so that's what we're gonna go over in this review. With that, let's get to it. Hey guys. This is Patrick from STH, and this is the Microtik CRS310 8G Plus 2S Plus IN. And I hopefully did that in one shot without looking. And the reason you can do that in one shot without looking is because, while not beautiful, Microtik's naming is at least somewhat sensible. We know that with CRS3 that this is going to be a managed switch from Microtik. We also know that 10 means that we have 10 ports. We have 8G Plus. G Plus apparently means 2.5 gig, uh, and I don't really know why. I really wish that they just put like an M or something like that to say that like, hey, multi-gig, I don't know. But anyway, two and a half gig, and then we have our 2S Plus, which is SFP Plus, and then IN because this is a desktop form factor. It even has little rubber feet, so you can put it down. Now we have been doing a ton of two and a half gig ethernet switch reviews because we've been, well, basically waiting for this product because we've been waiting for Microtik to get in the market with a low cost two and a half gig managed solution. We were so excited when we saw the announcement that we immediately covered it on the STH main site. And when we did that STH main site thing, we said, hey, look, we're going to still do all these two and a half gig Ethernet switch reviews because, well, Microtik has announced it, but usually it takes a long time between when Microtik announces something and when we actually have the product. A couple days later, out of the blue, a DHL box appeared with this. I assume that Microtik sent it. And since I don't know where this switch came from, I'm going to say that this is actually being sponsored by the STH YouTube members. If you do want to help support us, you can join down below. Any help is super appreciated because it helps us go and produce these videos. And in this review, we're gonna talk about why this thing is pretty awesome, what we would change about this in future versions. And also I wanna go show you another switch that I think that this is gonna be competitive with or Microtik should be competing with. That sounds like a lot to get to, so let's get to it. Okay, so taking a look at the switch, this is a pretty large two and a half gig switch for kind of like what it is and what we've been used to seeing. And so let's just kind of do a quick tour of like, what are the features on the switch? I'm gonna show you why it's a little bigger when we get inside, but let's just kind of look at this real quick. Okay, so looking at the front of the switch, you see some things that are very micro and some things that are, uh, you know, gonna definitely raise some eyebrows. Like for example, we have the little reset switch here, which we typically haven't had before. And then we also have our DC power input on this side of the switch. And frankly, we've seen a number of switches with the like front mounted power. And this is no different. The one difference that I don't love on this is that this doesn't have Microtik's like power retention thing. You do get a wide input voltage, but on the other hand, I just don't like the fact that you can go and, you know, have the switch on and then all of a sudden just go and pull this thing out and then, uh, and then you know, your switch dies, right? Next to that, we have our USB port. So if you need a USB flash drive to flash something, then you can do that or store something, you can do that. We also have our power LED and then we have our eight two and a half gig ethernet ports. Guys, finally two and a half gig ethernet on a Microtik product, an eight port product, this is awesome. Next to that, we get two SFP plus cages, which can be used for things like 10 gigabit ethernet. And you can also go and use a 10 G base T adapter in one of those and get 10 G base T if you needed. Now this is a far cry from the 24 port switches and all that kind of stuff that I think a lot of people have used Microtik switches for before, but at least, uh, at least we have two and a half gig and we have 10 gig, so that's good. Now, other than that power cable retention, there are two more things that are kind of missing on this that we would expect to see on most Microtik switches. The first one is that we don't get a console port, which some Microtik switches have, some don't. But the bigger one is probably the fact that we don't have an out of band management port. Like normally on Microtik switches, you have an extra port and it's like a one gig port or something like that that's used to go and talk to a management infrastructure. We, we don't get that on this. But with that, let's get to the rest of the chassis on the top. Uh, you know, there's not really that much going on. Side, maybe a vent. Other side, little vent. But then when we get to the back of this, you're gonna see that we have a grounding point as well as we have this fan. Now, this unit does have a fan, which is gonna surprise a lot of folks that have seen a lot of our, you know, unmanaged or, you know, kind of web managed switch reviews. A lot of those have been fanless. Well, this one has a fan and there's actually a good reason for it when we get inside. Now, I also wanna to get to the bottom and you're gonna see that we have our forward feet so you can actually put this on a desk because it is an IN chassis. So it is meant to be desktop. And I, I think that makes sense here. But the other thing you're gonna see is that this label has something that's very different from a lot of the Microtik switches that we've seen over the years. This has a randomized admin password. 
for years, we've just kind of had the same password on all our Microtik devices. This finally has updated and we have a whole, you know, video and article on this on like why, but there are now regulations in place across the different countries and jurisdictions that say you have to have a randomized password. And because you have to have a randomized password, default password, uh, Microtik had to comply with that. And we finally are getting that. Now, of course, let's talk about this chassis size real quick. It is the size that you could go put it on desk. No problem with it's for your feet, but there's another option, which is it comes with these rack mount ears and uh, it comes with like, you know, the giant rack mount ear and you can actually get brackets to go and put these side by side in a rack. So if you wanted to have two of them side by side, you can do that or you could just leave it on a desk and you could have two side by side on a desk. You can have probably a whole stack of them on a desk if you really wanted to. But uh, anyway, that's how big this chassis is. Okay, now getting inside the system, there are three screws. You get the three screws out and then uh, you can just pop off the lid. I think Microtik did a great job of not putting like 20 screws like we see some low cost vendors do. I just, I hate that. But with only three screws, you can get inside here. Now, once you're inside, you can see that this is not the simple like real tech, just like super low end switch that we've seen on a lot of the like unmanaged switches and stuff like that. This is actually using a Marvell Prestera part. I think it's like the 98DX226 s or something like that. And that also means that we get our dual core ARM 32 bit processor in there that runs like 800 megahertz. But the bigger thing there is that even though this is a two and a half gig switch, uh, it's also like the same switch chip that we've seen in a number of different Microtik switches previously, usually like their one gig generation ones. So instead of going to like a lower cost switch chip that may not run a router OS properly or like have to go deal with like, how do we go port router OS or whatever, they actually have a solution here that's like they pretty much understand because they have this switch chip in so many of their products. Okay, so the fan on this is just a four pin PWM fan. So if you wanted to replace it, you could. They actually do a pretty good job of making sure that it's not too loud. So I'm not really sure that you need it, but you could. The other kind of interesting thing though, is that you get a label inside. So not just this label outside, but you also get a label inside that has that default admin and password, you know, the random password in, in the switch. So I just kind of think that that's like, that was interesting that they're doing both. So like if that gets scratched off, we can maybe like open it up and like go find out what the default password is. So there's that. And then the other thing that you just kind of notice in here is like, if you look at this side, you notice that we have like this giant hole. We have a whole bunch of components that are clearly not placed. Usually what Microtik does is they have like one kind of like low end version and then maybe they build something on top of that and they release that later. So it kind of feels like maybe there's gonna be a new version of this coming just because of how many unplaced components there are on this PCB. And yeah, it is kind of fun that there's just a giant hole here, right? So with that hardware overview done, let's get to the performance. Okay, so one of the benefits of actually using a higher end chip here is that this thing passes two and a half gig ethernet traffic, 10 gig traffic without any issues. And it's actually one of the better performing switches that we've had in our two and a half gig ethernet series. Now we've generally been testing these switches is all just kind of like unmanaged type switches where you're just kind of like blasting traffic through and just kind of seeing how much performance you get. But I also know that folks are gonna wanna buy the switch, not just because it's an unmanaged switch, but because it actually has Microtik's management interface. So let's get to that next. Okay, so on the management side of this, you have your three options as normal. You have your CLI, you also have your web GUI, and then you have Winbox. And we're just gonna use the web GUI here, but at the end of the day, this is a router OS 7 device and you get a router OS level five license. Now the other side to it though, is even with that level five license, you also have just frankly more functionality than I think most folks are gonna use in this. So when you go into the web interface, there is a ton that you could potentially do. Now, realistically, let's take a step back here. You're not gonna use every single feature that's in this web management interface. And it would take us, I don't know, many hours a day or two of a video. Like I'm not gonna go through all of these with you, but what I will say is that you can go look up online, which features are like kind of fast path. So which ones are hardware accelerated in the switch chip and also which ones uh, you know are gonna be running in software. At the end of the day, if you are running in software, that means that you are only running on that dual core 32 bit ARM processor that's running at 800 megahertz. So you're not gonna be pushing things like 20 gigabits per second of like, you know, if you're doing like a firewall, 20 gigabits per second is probably gonna die because you, you just frankly don't have that much CPU performance here. So I think it's pretty easy to go in and just try the router OS like management interface to see if you like it, if you haven't used it before. But on the other hand, if you wanna see if a particular feature in this managed switch is hardware accelerated, well, I would say just go look up the documentation. That changes all the time. So it's probably gonna be different between when I'm recording this video and when it's actually gonna go live. 
Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption and noise real quick. So at idle, this thing is using about 10.5, 10.7, somewhere in there, watts. Um, you're gonna see that we're probably a little lower than that right now. And I'll just tell you that uh, I am sitting this far away from, I cannot hear it in our 34 dBA noise floor studio. The fan eventually ramps down and that's kind of what we're seeing here. Now when we started plugging things in, we found that when we plugged one two and a half gig ethernet port, we jumped to about 11.5 watts. Using a 10 G base T adapter in this, we got to about 12.9 watts. And just to kind of give you some just kind of bigger numbers, um, you know, Microtech says that I think it's like 21 watts is if you don't have anything attached here, uh, that's your maximum power consumption. And then the total maximum that you can get in this Microtech says is about 34 watts. So that kind of gives you like a little bit of a range for maybe like 10 and a half watts up to like 34, but you're probably never gonna really hit 20 or 21, 24, something like that. So just kind of giving you an idea that that's kind of like what power range this thing operates at. Now, one other thing is just when this thing starts up, it is pretty loud. It takes about a minute or two for it to get down to that pretty quiet level where you really don't notice it in the studio. And I'll just let you listen to this real quick. Okay, just kind of giving you guys an idea. This thing is, uh, you can hear this now and the, like the noise level over here is like 43 dBA. And I'll just tell you that if this fan is going, that is darn annoying. So hopefully Microtech figures out a way to go and make this quiet most of the time. Okay, for all these videos, I like to have a key lessons learned section. And for this, uh, we definitely have some key lessons learned. So the first thing I think is just kind of interesting about this is that the front in the overall port configuration, all the like little features and stuff, it feels very much like a switch that we've seen previously. There used to be a switch, the Microtech CSS 6108G2S Plus IN, and it looks very similar to this, but the switch at best was okay. It wasn't a CRS series switch. I and mean, we pretty much just used it as an unmanaged, just dumb switch. But this one gig switch is only a CSS switch. It was only about $99 and we've used it for, you know, a couple of years and then I think uh, it ended up getting recycled. But I think the fact that this is a CRS switch with the full router OS is definitely better. But when you look at it, you have to look at them and say like, oh yeah, they actually kind of look pretty similar. But you're probably wondering, Patrick, why in the heck do you have this TP-Link switch here? And I can tell you exactly the reason. This TP-Link switch, which has a giant name that I'm not even going to try to say, but I think the reason that this is competitive to me is because this is kind of the next step of what I want Microtik to do. So you're going to see on the front of this TP-Link switch that we get eight two and a half gig Ethernet ports. We also get two SFP plus ports, just like Microtik has. And also like Microtik, we get a management setup and we get not just a kind of basic management. We also get a, it's like a layer two, layer two plus managed. You can do things like set up VLANs and all that kind of stuff. And you have uh, not just a web interface, but you have their like Amada, like their, their web thing or their kind of like centralized management thing. Now the Microtik is only $219. So of course we would expect that you have a lower feature set and in some ways with the management set, maybe you have maybe more features with Microtik, but on uh, on the TP-Link, you have something that you definitely don't have, which is PoE. This has a 240 watt PoE budget, which is absolutely wild. The power supply is also internal. So having a PoE plus switch with 240 watt PoE budget, uh, you know, I just kind of feel like that's kind of like the next step for Microtik. Like I'd like to see a PoE two and a half gig ethernet switch. And I know somebody at Microtik is probably sitting there like, wait a sec, this guy just said, hey, he wants a two and a half gig switch with 10 gig. We gave him that and now he's asking for PoE plus as well. Like what the heck is this guy thinking? And like, yeah, I always want to see kind of that next product. And that's kind of what I hope Microtik would do as a next product. And maybe also a 24 port, 48 port version. I know Marvell probably has to make you silicon for it. And oh, by the way, when you get to those, you should also have 25 gig ethernet so you can connect to some of the other 100 gig and 25 gig switches that we reviewed for Microtik previously. Yeah, I know it's a lot, but I just kind of think that's the next step that Microtik really needs to take. Hey, but overall, this may not have PoE plus, it may not have a power like retention thing, it may not have a console port. It may not have a out of band management port. The fan might be a little bit loud when you start it up. And I don't like the fact that it even has a fan. It should have a heat sink and just be passively cooled in the first place. I know, but at the end of the day, I think folks are going to be really excited about this switch because it's two and a half gig ethernet and 10 gig from Microtik. There's something to be said for a lower cost solution from a vendor that people actually know. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at Microtik's new two and a half gig ethernet switch. We're going to add this to our two and a half gig ethernet buyer's guide. Of course, we have dozens of switches there that you can go check out if you just want to find something that may not be this or maybe something a little bit different. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.